my own gums. Yes, you lot, what is good? I'm Thomas Griffin, this is My Own Gums, and this week I'm having a chat with Tony Pitts. Tony's an actor, writer, and top, top bloke. I met him a few years back when he recorded an episode of our Two Shot podcast, and a number of the things he said that day properly, properly stuck with me. He's thoughtful, poetic, and authentic to a fault. He's from Sheffield, but he's lived all over the shop, and I'm buzzing to ask him about the clothes he wears and how they've shaped him as a person. With a guest on my own arms, I'm trying my best to keep it varied. Ages, professions, cultural backgrounds, all that type of stuff. If you've got any suggestions of people you'd like to hear on future eps, then slide into the DMs. We are at my own arms on all the socials. Right, let's do the damn thing. This is My Own Gums with Tony Pitts. You know what it is? Tony, thank you very, very, very much for coming on. No, thank you very much. I uh, immediately feel pressure to live up to that introduction. Can only disappoint after that. <laughs> top, top, low, Mike, uh, might be pushing it. If, <laughs> Singular if, top. If, I, think, I think, yeah, I think, well, it depends on, uh, as always, it depends on, uh, I know you ask, I suppose. Tell me about the outfit that you're wearing today, first of all. Okay, so I'm fighting the culture wars for some reason. So, I mean, I mean, this is from Brighton Marina. I've got a boat down in Brighton, and it's NATO cold wear. And uh, I think she won 100 quid for it. And uh, Both pieces, top but, and bottom. Both pieces, but, but took 40. Uh, so I think it had been sticking. And then I spoke to somebody in the military stopped me recently to tell me that I think they call it uh, well, well, forgive me, because it's not my mistake, so I've, I feel free to repeat somebody else's uh, mistake. But I think he said that they called them the China outfit. I think that's to do with the cut of the... Yeah. Well, anyway, so it's a NATO uh, quilted trouser and jacket. So this would be worn below the fatigues, below the cortex, maybe? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. So I've got this, and then this started a bit of a frenzy with uh, camo stuff, so uh, which is how things tend to be for me. I, um, much the way that you might fall down a rabbit hole, I think the entirety of my relationship with the culture is that. So if I find a piece of music that I like, I will then wring its neck. I'll find every single piece by that composer or artist, and, and, that's, and the same with clothes. I, uh, I, um, and, You're all in on things. I'm all in. Yeah. Yeah, all in. And also, yeah, and I've got, um, you, it's not in shop, but I've got uh, just got a beautiful big uh, coat, uh, warm coat, army warm coat for this uh, bleak, biting winter that we're in. It fits like a glove, that. It's like it looks cut to perfection on your shoulders. Yeah. Did you have to go through a few try ons no, to one. get it? First one. You first, got an eye for that? One, yeah. It almost feels like a creative endeavour. It almost feels like. Uh, art really that if you talk about it it disappears i, I know this is horrendous Let, get, does everybody get yourself comfortable for uh, a brain splurge i know a huge cliche i know what i like i do know what i like i don't feel in many things that i have a choice but of course i've got all all sorts of choices, mm. but I, I doesn't feel that way because I think that there are other things at play other than the conscious mind. So if I see something, I think I oh, like that. I honestly can't remember trying something on and thinking I don't like it. It's instantaneous. Oh, the yeah, yeah, I see that, I think oh, I like that. Okay. And, that. And then the hope is, because I, I don't buy new, it's invariably... Um, well, I miss, I was going to come on to say, I tell you what I do miss uh, greatly is uh, the jumble sale. Okay. Uh, eBay's there, it's not quite the same. Uh, vintage, you partake in that vintage shops, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I do I'll, I'll shake the dice on there, man. Yeah, I like a, I like a vintage shop, and I like, a, and it's much like a bookshop. I can't be in there for too long because I'll come out with um, more than I went in for. Mm. I've touched on this with a few other guests, like the kind of um, the preference for second hand, for jumble sale, for thrifted, for vintage, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You find those clothes because they've been lived in by someone else, maybe someone that you don't know, that they've kind of got stories and feelings baked into them that you can reappropriate and I channel think it's into a yourself. Part of the same psychological, I don't know uh, that it actually bears the examination. I buy old houses and I, and I, and I on the whole, buy older cars. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's not much of a rebellion, is it? It's a pr pretty traditional. I tend to find myself in shops with Japanese teenagers. Yeah. That tends to be the... <laughs> it's one the, way of staying on the, trend, The, the people around me, <laughs> yeah, when I'm buying clothes. But that's but that's early planted. I, I was wearing my granddad's suit when I was 14. In the 70s, this is still uh, uh, deep at the heart of my family and perhaps the beginning of other things. I went into town with my mum in Sheffield in 1975 and she bought a leather jacket. 75, 76, she bought a turquoise leather jacket. This is extraordinary. And uh, we got home and I did it was school disco at night and I cut the sleeves off the jacket. I remember sitting on my bed, cut the sleeves of the jacket. At the shoulder? At the shoulder, that she'd just bought that day. <laughs> and then set off up the road to the school disco. And then the bewilderment overtook the anger. They were so <laughs> fucking bewildered that I'd done that without thought. I was thoughtless as a chip in a chip shop. I just thought, I'm wearing that. And I cut the arms off it. So, um, what was the reaction from the other school disco attendees when oh, you Oh, no, I didn't get there in that. No, okay. no, 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 that was, no, that was, that took an hour off my disco time <laughs> while I tried to go up with an acceptable, uh, I had silver Doc Martens on and I ended up wearing, uh, anyway, I could tell you it was a zip up purple top, but yeah, yeah. so so from early days, I think because there's a contrarian in me and I think that there's a rejection, I've not consciously thought everybody's doing that, I'm doing that. I was the second punk in my school. Keith mm -hmm. Taylor was the first punk, but he was a fifth year and I was a second year. But I was also simultaneously doing disco and I didn't feel a... Uh, Tension. No, 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 none whatsoever. And I talked, to, I was talking to Jim Moyer about this. He had his, and uh, actually it's a binding thing with um, my close friends that they've all not felt burdened by uh, tribal stuff early on. It's, there's a lot of kids today that aren't burdened by tribalness no. because the kind of influence, the global influence is there, but I feel when I was a kid, you were one thing or the other. Yeah. You might have had interest in one, but you're always slotted into one niche yeah. more than the other, so that's no, no, really true. interesting. Oh, no, no, I think you're absolutely true. That I think that, that the travel days have gone, I mean, because we lived in a monoculture then. I mean, you were, you know, mods and rockers, punks, and yeah, of course, you, and, uh, and that's the other thing, because I don't feel like I've hung an identity on myself. Mm. Whereas I think that's a lot of what the travel thing is. It's a belonging, and uh, and there's different types of people who are on the the outside. There are those that are on the outside are waiting to be asked in, and there are those who are quite happy outside. I'm quite happy outside. Okay, I don't mind it outside. Uh, and again, not a not, uh, posture because I despise that. For better or for worse, I've been fully myself if that makes sense. Well, let me take you back a bit to where maybe you weren't entirely full of yourself. I'm going to tell you something that you said on the Two Shot podcast that really stuck with me. You're probably going to hate listening to your own words back. I get the feeling that you're yeah. that kind of guy, but I'm going to do it to you anyway. You said, if I looked how I feel inside, I'd look like Charlotte Bronte. Yes, there's a, none of us are just one thing. That's more of physicality. That's... Um, that's boxing and weights and tattoos and armor building. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's protection. Yeah, that's that's protection because um, uh, a poet's heart in a comprehensive with two thousand four hundred kids was something that needed um, mm. wrapping up. As a six-year-old man, it's quite uh, a tool that you can work with, I suppose, that tension. But as a twelve or thirteen-year-old boy in that environment. It might well, that was a crucible, yeah, that's a crucible, that's where it was formed. So in order for me to have an interest in Shakespeare, I had to have an, an eye that it was unwise to catch. I couldn't be... Um, I had to, uh, yeah, I had to uh, project. So, and then, then what happens is we all, we, you, we all become who we're pretending to be, right? But I'm sure everybody else does as well, and now we're in that terrible terrors just spouting on about yourself but I always um, I felt a kind of autonomy and uh, things that seemed to be contentious like race or gender or, or, or f growing up where I did and, and, at, and at that time just it, it just all seemed absurd to me mm. 
That's, from the get go, nothing changed you into it. That's what you felt intrinsically. Yeah, kind of. yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it, my essential nature isn't, uh, and uh, I said clothes wise, because that's what we're, when mods came around, I was on the front of that, and I got a, I got a, 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 an envelope addressed to Sheffield's number one mod after I'd won a, <laughs> from a suspect old man who ran a club in Sheffield. <laughs> but, and, uh, but I was in my jazz funk pants. Okay. When I received it. Not particularly modish attire. No, 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 no. But as I said, I never felt burdened by that. I never, I genuinely never felt burdened by a need to, uh, I'd, I'd, whatever I felt, I felt. Rep your ends. So let's talk about the place that forged you, Tony. You're from Sheffield. What was that Sheffield like that you left? What kind of clothes grim, were people wearing? Grim, grey, grasping, hard. Uh, very particular. That's all northern industrial cities are they all, mm. all have their own particular uh sharp as sheffield is an expression there's a there's a tough town uh and if you wanted to i don't know let's say you wanted to dye your hair purple and wear on the off one bus on the way home there were going to be consequences uh, uh sheffield's always uh Punched a bit above its way, and there's and like kids in all those northern towns, you find yourself. So I, so I found uh, that. So I went to see the B 52s in Sheffield on my own. I did a lot of going out on my own. Lead mill. Uh, the, uh, no, it wasn't the lead mill. It was uh, the limit. Okay. And uh, it, I, I think Richard was there hauling. I think Jarvis was there, and then I met a couple of others that were also there uh, at that time. On their own, so there were there was there was a place for us. There, there, there was there was a place for uh, kindred spirits. Yes, yes, together emotionally and yes, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Driven by um, music. music, yeah, yeah. The music being at the core. But you were very much in the minority in terms of what the general populace was wearing in Sheffield in your uh, kind of teenage uh, yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. I think you. I, I don't wonder how much of a Enough of us to fill a club. I mean, then there's you've got the you know your top ranked clubs with two thousand in, uh, and at that time I think you needed a collar mm. in some of those clubs. That was the door rules. Oh yeah, yeah, that's policy. That stuff. That sounds it's extraordinary, isn't it? It's really changed over the last ten years. When I was going to my first clubs in the kind of early two thousands, if you weren't in shiny shoes and a shirt, you weren't coming in, yeah. and that seems to have gone well out the window now. Which yeah, is yeah, yeah. Jesus would have been turned away, but <laughs> Hitler admitted. How many times have you used that to a yeah, moment? No, 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 I don't have it. So anyway, so yes, so Sheffield was uh, uh, 1979. I left school, and and uh, I was literally on the cusp. But the school gates used to open, and then the steel factories would open their gates, and everybody would just run across the road and work in the steel factories. But that went actually those years, 79, 80. Sheffield hadn't reinvented itself into the place that I now know it to be. The bustling metropolis. Long before the cultural quarter and rounded vowel sounds, it was um, so it was a crazy days in the limit, and um, it was a knockabout town. So talking about the steelworks, that's where your dad worked, yeah. right? What do you remember him wearing as a child, and how much of that is reflected in? We, we talked about work wear earlier on. How yes. much of that is reflected in what you wear? Not <coughs> at all. I've got no my. Uh, so very young parents. My dad was 20, 21 when I came along. My mum was seventeen, so not much of an age gap. Uh, I only remember him in his, uh, I think, in a brown corduroy jacket. And uh, my dad certainly wasn't a peacock by no stretch. And I, had, um, I did see a picture of him um, as a teddy boy that shook me, because like, you don't, you know, you don't see your parents as. Uh, and that was it's, something it's, you didn't know about it. You didn't know. Not... I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. I could just saw him. I thought, oh, of course. Yeah, of course. But, but yeah. Well, you had your rockabilly era. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, and, and I think yeah, so. He visited it first. So yeah, my mem the only uh, fashion memory I have of my dad. Uh, I wrote a film called Funny Cow, and I made sure that that got referenced there. Was I remember my mum and dad used to ask everybody did in that culture at that time. Saturday night, they went to the club, mm. the impossible, unimagined glamour of Crook's Club, <laughs> to me, as a child, that, oh, it was seemed like some fucking temple of mammon, I couldn't, but they, so they used to go up there at half six, half seven, if there was a big turn on like Jer Jersey Turnpike, and I remember my dad really clearly 
with a, an orange shirt, which would have been from the club book, big collar, big green tie, brown velvet jacket, and I think some check pants, and a tash. Mm. That, and I remember thinking... Um, you look great. Yeah, because I'd only, I'd, I'd only, you know, I think that was a, must have been the first time I'd taken in the fact that it was anything other than a worker bee. Mm. Yeah. Which is something that you yourself have kind of strayed away from during your life. Not, not at the backbone for it, I'm afraid. Mm. I, uh, I had a, a brief um, spell with civilians and, and both parties agreed it was better that I fucked off. <laughs> Yeah. I still think the um, the attire that you wear, like the French worker wear, kind of harks back to that element of your. Yeah, it's a romanticised uh, abstraction. Though, yeah, isn't it? I mean you're, you're you're playing with if that's what you're doing with fashion, right? Mm. It, to some extent, again, subconsciously, that's uh, you know, and, and I've got I do have a, a lifelong abiding passion for France. I had a place down there. I'll be back. I was out there three, four times last year. I'm going next. I'm going on Sunday next week so that's inexplicable yeah and I've, what the French wear is just I think ineffable kind of just effortless, effortless. style yeah 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 no. uh, 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 even when it's bad yeah it, the kind of so down in Biarritz a, a lot last year uh, and there and not, nothing that I'd ever wear I think and I, I, I do remember sitting outside one night in a, a bo rosé bottle number three looking around me thinking that it's exactly that effortless uh, and seemingly self-aware without being self-conscious, the French. And it's something that English people struggle with, I think. Oh, yeah, very, yeah. very few yes. effortlessly dressed No, no, that's English right. No, I think you're absolutely right. Tell us about some of the other places that you lived. Obviously, you left at 19. Yeah. Um, you've lived, I lived uh, in Lancashire, yeah, Hebden yeah, Bridge. Man Manchester. I lived in Manchester. I moved to Manchester. No, did I move? Yeah, I moved to Manchester. Uh, just at the time of Affleck Palace and the Smiths, and that was an absolute mecca, it's yeah, a not, fashion mecca for me. Yeah. Affleck. I was right. there, so I was living in Stockport at that time. Yeah. And Joy Division were mates, I mean mates, and Morrissey was around, and all. so that I was there for all that period. That was Affleck Palace. That and what was, did you see in Manchester that you hadn't seen in, in Sheffield? Sheffield? Well, it was just not. Uh, it, I saw that it wasn't Sheffield. Okay. Yeah, Man the Manchester that I arrived in was Hassi and Hacienda came through, and uh, it, it was bigger skies in Sheffield, more open. Not on the um, Sheffield's built on seven hills like Rome, so and, and the centres are very particular. And then also that thing in Sheffield, people. I don't know if it still happens, but in my youth, people went out in fucking herds. Mm. People go out in groups of 15 and 20 and move from bar to bar in those sort of numbers. Uh, so Manchester just seemed, uh, and it was, it was very it was very vibrant then. And there was a, Affleck Palace was a, absolutely the place that was, uh, uh, and that was like a, a, a pilgrimage. Well, no, not a pilgrimage if you go every week, is it? But <laughs> no, that was a journey on a bus, is what that was. Your exposure to those kind of shops, because Affleck for me, just was mind blowing when I first went there. Yeah. Like all the things that I'd seen my favourite bands wearing were yeah. available to buy. You could become that yeah. character. Yeah. Did that excite you? Oh, giddy, you giddy, giddy. I can tell you, I can tell you the first. I've got a pair of boots, short, uh, fur lined black boots, steel caps. I've got some, uh, I've got a big roll neck white jumper and I've got like a suede. Uh, and leather fisherman's kind of outfit thing and a, and a beret and uh, I was very, very pleased with myself mm. in that for quite a while. No, 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 exactly that. I get um, a real freeze on of, uh, yeah, uh, the, and it's, uh, and I think, um, why I'm not good in big social situations, I think I've got, I can, I've got a bit of overwhelm in me. Mm. I get and think, oh, there's a, you know, so I'd go in see something that I want, get it and get out, as I, as I touched on before. So, yeah, Manchester was really vibrant. I lived in London. I'd stayed in Dean Street in the... Uh, I was right in the middle of uh, Dean Street in the late 80s. Where you can really peacock. Yeah, really, really peacock. Uh, and that, yes, which is exactly what that was. Um, the, the only time I've dropped out, I lived above Hebden Bridge... Uh, uh, in my 40s but such was the weather 
there that you were shaped by the winds. So that was reduce uh, the functionality. Oh no, yeah, reduce the functionality yeah. uh, uh, with the rare uh, any opportunity for um, expression, which is essentially what I think close. That's a commonality, mm. right? That's that's what we're talking about is expression. But Hebden specifically is one of the few towns of its size yeah. and location where I think there is a bit more freedom to express yourself. I don't know. Oh no, no, that's... without a doubt, no, without. A doubt. I was up in the hills above Hebden. Uh, uh, yeah, I was. I was. I mean, I. It was. Uh, I'd gone for. Uh, I think that thing that people often do in the forties. I'd gone for um, isolation. I wanted. Um, I wanted to be. I wanted big skies and and to walk without seeing people. Mm. Uh, and then invariably, inevitably, that closes in on you because that's what it does. Mm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, no, you're right about Hebden. It's it fiercely independent um, uh, in its close. It didn't allow chains in. Uh, it was just independent businesses. So, yeah, and near enough to Manchester that if I needed that, uh, yeah, and then yeah, then from Hebden down to Brighton. Uh, I've been down in Brighton for thirteen, fourteen years, uh, which is so. Brighton is, obviously is running to the edge. It's one step from walking into the sea. That's what Brighton's for. But very history in terms of its cultural yes. impact yeah. as well. And I think you know the kind of jumble sale thrift store yeah. elements is probably something new oh there. yeah but precedes that i mean i think the you know the royal escape and it the 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 um yeah and it is i mean I, th there is definitely something in about getting to the edge it does feel like that's that's very clear and there and there is a yeah brighton is is that and then i split my time between there and um and up in town so uh, and Brighton's uh, d defined by the seasons, but defined by tourists. So you get the hordes in the summer. Mm. Um, uh, so that's the, the the style gets dissipated in the uh, in that. And the, but the the uh, Denny's the citizens of this yeah, there's some uh, fabulous creatures floating around. <laughs> Yeah. Your tribe, your people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But well, I've seen. I mean, yeah. I one of my earliest memories of being in Brighton is walking along the cliff tops. I saw a man who would have been my age then, I guess, in full uh, red Indian outfit, and that was his. Uh, that was his daily. <laughs> Only in Brighton. Yeah, that was, I, I'd like. Yeah. How yeah, would that have gone yeah. down in Chef? Yeah, not. Uh, you'd have to be a resolute character <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> Well, talking of character resolution, yeah. um, you said that you built up a lot of armour of your early years and boxing and lifting weights was a yeah. big part of your life. Yeah. I think boxing really embodies this tension between like hyper-masculinity and mm. flamboyant showmanship. Mm. Do you think it was that that attracted it to you or was it the pure kind of necessity of... Uh, no, I think I, well, I think it's a lot of things. I think in order to be one thing, then I had to be another thing as well. And I also think that um, box uh, okay, different things. So weights, the, the weights are still, I'm still trained. I'm trained when I leave you t this afternoon. The reason, and the reason I do weights is certainty. Mm. That weight is always that way. However, I come to it, and I, I like, I like, no, I don't know, I like, I need that. My body needs that because it's so hard into me now. Uh, uh, I absolutely must do that. The boxing uh, is uh, terrifying. Uh, do you enjoy that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've boxed, um, done the training for a good number of years, but they could never really get over the terrifyingness of no. getting punched in the nose. It's horrible. No, it's horrible. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's, no, you're absolutely right, and that, I think that's often the case that people go and then they have the first spar and get a smack and think not so much, and and quite right. Uh, I, 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 and I don't want to overstate my uh, ability or uh, you know anything like that at all. But I, uh, it's, I've got a complicated relationship with it because as part of me despises it. I mean, is it, uh, and I'm, uh, equally, I could tell you. I've, pretty much every fighter that's fighting today and it, you know, I, I've followed it my whole life I still uh, it's a brutal it's 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 removing the thin veneer is it not that we all have 
it's it's that and it's also in so all, all art is a lie but it's a lie that shows allows us to see the truth so i've lived in that space my whole life there's no line there there's no line in a boxing ring you, uh, <laughs> you can't and you can't make them laugh either how much do you think the kind of showmanship element affects what happens in the ring you've got some flamboyant dresses oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, you can yeah, win yeah. the mind game of a boxing match yeah, oh no no I think mental is huge but I think I think that the amount of people to, that can show about in boxing is so minuscule you have to be I think the yeah, oh, you've got, you have to it's got to be it's another thing I've seen it I've been I got with somebody who was number eight in Britain once and uh, and I played football um, North East Counties and then I played for 10 years with the only News 11. So I've, I've been around professional sports, my boxers and football, uh, and a couple of other sports, a snooker of mates who have been, you know, and uh, it's a different thing. Mm. They, they have a different th a thing that I don't possess, a thing that you, none of us here possess. Uh, you, and you can, and I believe, I do believe people's essential nature. And then I think there are, different factors at play. So in order to be, I, I, I completely get what you're saying. So that showmanship and that razzmatazz is all right until you come across uh, uh, Billy the Thumper. A killer. Who's, I might who's not, not so bothered mm. about what you, what top you're wearing. Interesting. Or what you're saying to him <laughs> that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, I remember the first time at sparring, man, and I was like, fuck, I was not ready for that, man. No. It's visceral. Obviously, been hit outside the ring, but when it's like controlled and by someone that's trained to oh, it. Oh, yeah. you've got another, definitely, definitely know you've got at least another two, three minutes. Yeah, to go. <laughs> stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, of course. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So, so I, uh, and I've got a thing for uh, cars and motorbikes. I've got that thing. I've got, I am. Um, uh, box, boxing was like it's like the cars and the motorbikes it actually frees my mind up mm. uh, it, and and because it, it makes me the thoughtless focus. well I'm th yeah. well I'm thoughtless I'm thoughtless it doesn't uh, it allows I don't have internal dialogues uh when somebody's trying to smash me in the face mm. or when I'm trying to get around a corner without hitting a wall that yeah. it, I actually feel freer but then I think a lot of people with busy minds search out those pastimes that yes. give them that feeling yeah it empties that out mm. it empties that out and also you can live I know that you can live like wood or you can live like water and I live like water when I'm in that sort of environment how do you mean well I feel I'm, so this is I'm I feel I'm wood I'm woody I'm sort of blocky and and that I'm a bit sort of sharp edged and I can be a bit stuck hard tongues and struggle for the flow to come in in those environments where there's a, 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 an element of danger my mind and my brain and if we can separate those two things turns that off then it's water then I just then I'm thoughtless mm. and, I, um, and that's when and that's what I am for with writing that's that's my greatest an abiding passion, joy, and salvation is being, is writing and finding water. So just putting the pen on the paper, and I'm not thinking. I know you said when you went to Hebden, you were kind of reclusing away from mm. it all. Does the way that you dress for yourself affect your art as a writer or an actor? No, no, it definitely doesn't. No, 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 there's no doubt about that. But I, but it's a bit lazy to suggest there isn't a link. But the, I, so uh, at baseline, we're just talking from baseline. I think it's because we like separating things, don't we? Like separating things into to, to make order the chaos of being alive. The impulse to dress uh, in a certain way is tied up. It's all tied up with expression. It's uh, that's about. It's at the, you know, at the risk of completely ruining the podcast and having some psycho bubble for the next hour, I'd say that it's all comes from the same uh, spring. It's from the same source. Uh, so no, I wouldn't put on a frock coat in order to write a bit of. No, I'd, no, no, no. I lay on the bed in my undercrackers and write there happily, <laughs> and, I, and write and ask them when it 
Well, it comes, it comes. So no, so definitely not. No, That's and also, cute. also, I'm also aware of that phenomenon as well, which I'm, I think I can sniff out. I can, I can, I think I can sniff out people that have, uh, that have, uh, the 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 clothes are an add-on, mm-hmm. or a posture, or a, or. A, I remember in Leeds at the time of the warehouse and stuff. There was a, very, a singer up there, and, uh, but it wasn't based in people who were creative or uh, an artistic endeavour in the hearts. It just it was it was an affectation of that. And that reeks to you. It stinks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's not me. But our music is super super important to you. And Sheffield's always punched above its weight in that aspect. Mm. Has there been a music scene and a company in fashion scenes that are obviously very linked, more mm. so historically than maybe they are now, mm. um, that you've attempted before thinking, that's not for me, that you've dabbled in and thought Attempted and said, no, oh God, no, no, no. it's impossible. No, uh, and uh, um, no, I couldn't, I, can't, I couldn't envisage any point in my life where that would happen, because uh, um, no. I think that points to your authenticity and that's something I want to discuss a little bit later um, but let's talk about music and how that's influenced because I know music is your yeah yeah writing's your passion but music's the thing that moves yeah, they're all the same thing art, okay. art, art is my thing that, that's it's tattooed all over my body that's the that's the that, and that's taken me 60 years to be able to say out loud without um, the whole of Sheffield crashing through me but let's talk yeah. about music specifically yeah um Cause I, that's where I always looked for yes. my fashion influences at an early age. Yeah. How has that, and which musicians particularly, may have influenced or affected how you the, dress? Okay, uh, the, I remember seeing Bowie, and it would be like 73, 74 on TV, and it was like, and I was in my tiny little, uh, uh, my little uh, back-to-back in Sheffield in Crooks, uh, and Bowie appeared on the screen, and it was a fucking visitation. It was a uh, there was it caused bristling in the room. Uh, uh, it was that it was that first sort of playing with gender and stuff, and the I mean, that's, that's, obviously I saw the subsequent reaction to Boy George and stuff. So I, I didn't go out and dress like Bowie, but I did f- go to bed feeling comforted. Mm. And uh, and less um, that there were options. Yeah, that the, the, there were options, that, and that there were people. Uh, I, I just it was it really was. I mean, it was almost like I've had two epiphanies in my life. One was the Red Balloon, the film, and then and then seeing Bowie, and uh, and I had no idea it was going to be in my television that night. I was expecting now you've been served or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was sort of, and then he was there. And uh, it was uh, yeah, it, it, it's everything went slow. It was it was that. Mm. I just thought fuck, and and he was such um, so charismatic and and and, and there's an otherness to him that I think even as a child I recognised as as authentic. Mm. So so I'd say so Bowie, and then, and then obviously look, musicians tend just tend to be the cool kids, right? Mm. Obviously, by the 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 art is impeccable. The music itself is impeccable. But um, you're someone that loves art holistically. I yeah. think the fashion element of it, the yeah. showmanship, the yeah. um, the play with gender and with expectation, yeah. is yeah. almost as as important as the the genius songwriting itself. It's all part of this. Oh, the, oh the whole. yeah. Again, that's. I think we. Uh, it's that tyranny of definition that we all live under, where we've got to fucking give everything names and pull it out and extricate it and identify it and then put it. And I think it's. Um, and then it, when that expands out into the culture, it's the most divisive way you can look at things. So I think, of course, we need words for things. I get it, but I think it's. Look to the I, I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to look at the uh, at the poem. I don't need uh, the poem explained, or I don't need to know the life story of the. I'm happy with the poem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about authenticity because I think it's a particularly important concept to you and a character trait that I said in the intro that you're authentic to a point of fault. Um, how does that relate to the clothes that you wear and the clothes that other people wear? So okay, well, authenticity means to have um, autonomy authority over yourself and that uh, um, 
Uh, you're right, it's, it's a to a fault, and it has so much strong flavour, so therefore not to everybody's taste, and that's, and I, I get that, I understand. I don't, don't feel like I've had a choice, really, the, the, this is the construct, this is... Uh, it's baked uh, in, not something you've worked towards. No, 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 absolutely, no, absolutely not, no, no, I, I, which would explain a lot of my bewilderment with broad social trends. Okay. I think, I, I, you know, I've got a lot of Emperor's New Clothes thoughts on me. I, I think, oh, that seems fucking absurd to me. Mm. But it seems to be, the fact that we're alive and this is really happening is enough to fucking, to, you know, that's the glue, that's, that's the shaking under my feet. I think I, I've often not been, done myself any favours, but ultimately long term you do, because I don't think, you present yourself as one thing and you're not, you inevitably, that's not going to take you, you're going to crumble. Uh, 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 and the only time I've got in trouble in my life, in any real trouble, uh, of any real type, is when I've not gone with my instincts. Mm. Yeah. When I think of authentic in terms of clothes, I'm thinking of someone that dresses how they are inside and I think that's the most stylish thing that you can do. I mean, stylish sounds a little bit frivolous, but it's complete, isn't it? Like, authenticity... You, you dress how you think. You dress how you feel. You dress. Just so uh, yeah, yeah, I so okay. So, I, so I'd, I'd, I'd think I'd, I'd say think out of that. I'd say feel. Okay. I don't think you just say think. And uh, 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 I've got tattooed on my back. Be as you wish to seem, which um, has been a, a motto. Be as, be as you wish yeah. to seem. Yeah. So I don't. That's authentic. That's authenticity. Authentic, yeah, boiled yeah, down. Yeah, basically, wish you same. And, and, and conscious thought gets in the way of so much for all of us. I think because the first thing you feel in your stomach is usually right. The second thing with your mind is, but what if? And did it? Did it? Did it? And you fucked. Mm. So, so I think, I think, um, close wise, that's the same thing. I've never, and I, and yeah, I, if if I bought something and that. Uh, and the broad consensus was I look fucking ridiculous in it. I, there wouldn't be, a, not there's not an inch of me that I think I'm not wearing it. Yeah, not an inch. But that's not a, again. It's not a posture. I just, I just. That's it. Wouldn't cross my mind. I wouldn't. I would. I, yeah. You've put the work in. You've built that armor to be able to do that as well. Like um, being able to walk where you need to walk to be able to do that and back yourself to be able to do that. I think. Yeah, well, yeah, you take the, look, if, yeah, if, yeah, if you grew up in Sheffield, I was 62 when I was born and, you know, if you're, if you're going out in your mother's jackets and see through plastic sandals and that on the off on bus, then that's to be, there's going to be uh, other options available to you. <laughs> As an actor yourself. Yeah. You're obviously asked to wear different costumes, yes. different visages as professionally as part yes. of your job. Are the costumes that you've worn, have you ever tried on a uh, a personality in work and then that's rubbed off onto a you? A million percent. A, mi a million, million percent. So I'm a regular, uh, it's, it's, it works for me, that's why I'm up in Harrogate. I do, I'm a regular on um, uh, All Creatures playing the dad and the costume film for that was just Gideon. They had some beautiful original old 30s um, workwear and suits and stuff. And I did uh, War Horse, uh, Spielberg, so that was uh, pre-peakies. So yeah, and I'd had the haircut before. So th that tends to be the way it goes, right? So I got, I got the haircut for War Horse, pretty much pre-peakies, shaved at the sides and the, and pulled back. So that steers you a certain way. I did a job actually that Craig did, Craig Parkinson, with um, Rob Lowe, and that was interesting because I played a, it's like a quasi-political role. It was a chief, the conceit was extraordinary. It was that it was set in Boston, Lincolnshire, and I was a, a, a appointed Rob Lowe uh, from LA to come and, uh, police and mean streets of Boston in Lincolnshire and the concept, the idea was that my character was extremely wealthy and it was just a bit of a play thing and something for him to do with his dad's money so they said so he should dress expensively very expensively but badly Tasteless. Well, that, that was my my sort of take on it really so I ended up with the most horrendous 
uh, expensive but uh, tasteless tap. I'm We're not, ta talking of the... like f fabrics and especially, particularly when you're playing period pieces, do you think the authenticity of the costume, how it wears you, how it how it squeezes you into oh, it? Oh no, maybe? no. So I did a thing set, uh, James House set in uh, Amer uh, the first settlers in America mm. in the uh, sixteen. Uh, what it was 1640 something like that so we were shooting that out in Hungary in 40 degree heat in in and that uh, and that's the job that I shaved my hair for and that you could feel uh, the tightening and you could feel that the tightness of um, the button down dignity of people or the yeah no, definitely in forms it's uh, it's it's chicken and egg, right? Which is the culture informs the fashion, or the fashion informs the character, or it's all the, the blend of that. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I played 60s footballers in mohair suits, and that makes you feel a certain way. The way the the the, 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 the the fit of something. Changes your breathing. Changes your breathing. Ch no, it changes the way you carry yourself. You're more conscious of, of that, the... The, that of it, uh, yeah, no, I think that, um, again, I think that these are, these are feelings rather than thoughts, because if you start to overthink that, then you, then it goes away. It's like um, squeezing a bar of soap, you do it too tight, it goes. Yeah. As we get older, the tendency for most people is to dress more and more conservatively in this country. From what I can see from your gear, that is uh, an attitude that you seem to reject. Yeah, 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 refuse, Nick. But well, I think well, my, obs uh, my observance would be that people tend to find a period in their lives and then and they'll stick with it. It tends to be. I mean, it's changed over the course of my life. As a, as a child, people just dressed as the parents. I mean, mm. you know, like almost, in some cases, literally as the, I think. And then also, if you find fame at a particular period, you'll find that that's a phenomenon where people get fame in the 80s, they'll keep the mullet, and they'll keep, they'll, they have to, they're, they're sort of trapped by that. Uh, I know, I know, I absolutely, no, I, I, again, it's not a conscious refusal to, uh, but I won't be... Um, yeah, I, I, I said I was out in a um, turquoise shell suit um, a few days ago, uh, completely unburdened by. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, because I'm because it's the inside out rather than the outside in with me. So no, I won't. Uh, I, I don't envisage. Um, Toning it down. No, 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 because I don't know how that would manifest. What would I do to tone it down? I don't, I don't know what I'd wear. What would so I this wear? This burning kind of will to, uh, I think, for you, most people by the 60s kind of maybe thinking about retiring and stuff like that, and it's the, the kind of will to be creative and yeah. be yourself yeah. seems as strong for you as it has ever been to me yeah 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 no, no, yeah, no you're absolutely right but i don't i've not lived a conventional life people say to me it's when people say to me what do you do at the weekend it, it always seems extraordinary to me because i don't have weekends and i don't have you know because i've not worked i've not i've not worked i've not i've not i've not been in you know, I've uh, I've spent the whole of my adult life after a brief and doomed attempt to join in. <laughs> I spent the whole of my life living a, a, a certain way, and it's all. Um, but I, what I do know, what I always feel, and I can't really be uh, as succinct as I'd like to be on this, but but I do know when I'm starting to drift towards looking another way. I do I do have a feeling. I remember, yeah, I do have to a, the next era. Uh, the next, next era. I think, oh, yeah, I do definitely get a sense of. I might think Bowie low that era. I don't know. It's it's it's, 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 it's all nebulous. It's all a bit. It's all a bit. But I know when there's a change coming. Mm. I don't know when it's sounds. I think all right, and and it's, and that's driven by uh, um, haircut. I think. So I'm growing my hair and a beard at the minute, so I'm, I'm sort of in this. When this comes off, I suspect there will be a... But I, like, but I need 
that I need that Evolution. Const- yes, I, yes, I need the movement. Whereabouts are you in the uh, progression currently? You're deep in. Are you, um, are you uh, new well, to this? I or? suspect because you do look drastic. I think I met you maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. You do look quite drastically different yeah. to what you did then. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, uh, all I can tell you with any degree of certainty is when I see you in four or five years time, I will look just drastically different again. I may look drastically different uh, this time next year. You said before that you often find yourself in clothing retail spaces with people a lot younger than your Japanese teenagers, you mentioned. Yeah. Who most of us look to for fashion tips. That's right. Are well, they not to be? Yeah, they're not to be ignored. Um, are there any current trends that you see kids wearing these days that you love, but you think oh, that's not for me? That's uh, for, for younger people. Well, if I love it, no. If I love it, I'll wear it. I love that. No, no, I love no. That. that. But I can't. But what? But you no. Know, yeah, I do. Sometimes I look at kids or old people and think you look. That's, uh, I don't like that at all. Mm. But I'd never look at anybody and think that looks, I love that, I'm not wearing it. Yeah. Do you not think I love that for you, but not for me? Well, I mean, me, yeah, my me, me mum's looks good in a, sorry, that's flipping. <laughs> um, no, I, no, I, no, I, I, it's to, again, uh, uh, I, I, if I saw something that I loved, I thought I really liked that. And, I, and also, I don't tend to, I don't consciously see things on people I don't think. I don't think I do, but I, not consciously. I'll go into a shop and look at something and think, I like, I like well, I love that. So I'll buy that. And then, and I'll often buy something and it'll go in the cupboard until such time as we're ready for it to... Keep it on ice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've got, I've got, so, so on the boat, for, I mean, I've got, uh, you know, it's a boat. Brighton Marine, and I've got these three bedrooms, and they're, they're full of, uh, yeah, it's full. And I still, I'm gonna buy. I've seen a, a nice uh, uh, top that I'm gonna buy this afternoon. I saw it yesterday and tried to resist it, but and it's shouting me now. It's called your name. It's shouting me. Hey, <laughs> as I went out, he went, "Come on." <laughs> so I will be going back for that this afternoon. I look forward to seeing the fit pigs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's our final question, Tony. Yeah. If I was to stop this halfway through the question, ask you how much you care on a scale of one to ten. I know you care a lot. You're a ten on ten carer. But if I was to ask you how much do you care about clothes on a scale of one to ten? Oh, God, I see, I can't. Can I just can't go along with things? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how I'd answer that. I just don't know what number I'd give you to. I, I, it's a contrary okay, question. Let, me, from let me rephrase it in a way that I, I'm happy, to, that I can be honest about. All I can tell you is from being a kid, a young kid, like like ten, when I was tied a tie around my waist uh, and wore it out. All I can tell you is from ten that I've had over fifty years of uh, wearing clothes that I love. It's one of those quiet certainties. It's one of those you think, oh, of course, I've always been that way. So by that measure, it'd be a ten, but it's a quiet ten. Whereas music and art and all, they're, they're loud tens, and I search them, and I want that. It's a ten, ten, ten. I'm gonna have more of that ten speed, the cars, the, 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 the literature, art. Oh, they're, they're loud tens. Fashion's just been a constant, and, and it's and it's always been about anotherness and uh, and uh, an expression of even when I've not had a great deal to express or been sure what it was that I was expressing it's always been so therefore a lifelong silent tent Cheers, man. Oh, you're pretty well. Thank you very much, Tony. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. No, no, I'm sorry, sorry to the audience who have had to listen to that rumbling, <laughs> incoherent shite. What a total gem of a person Tony is. National fucking treasure material. Big thanks to you lot for being here. Don't forget to share this episode with a mate you think will love it. Massive, massive thanks this week to Sam Birch. He's the person filming, engineering and producing all this stuff. Wouldn't be able to do it without him. Nice one, Sam. 
You know where to find us on the internet. We are at My Own Garms everywhere. If you want to support us with a quid or two, go to patreon.com slash myowngarms and we'll do our level best to make it worth your while. That's it for another rep. We'll be back dead soon with another one. See you then. Stranger.